Hello, my name is Ajit Shah and I'm going to show you how to perform uh, in vitro in vivo correlation analysis or IVIVC using pharmacokinetic uh, modeling program PKMP. The first thing that we need to do is to sign into the program using your credentials. Once you click on the sign in, uh, you are into the program. And, and we need to click on the IVIBC module where you can upload the file uh, that is needed for the data analysis. The file has three components. One is for the IVIR data that is needed for the computation of uh, disposition parameters. Uh, then the dissolution data that is ne needed for the dissolution analysis and the in vivo data uh, that is needed uh, for the uh, computation of uh, deconvolution parameters uh, using uh, Wagner-Nelson method or other methods as appropriate. And, and so we will select Wagner-Nelson method and I have al already uploaded a file uh, and then we will select that file. And as I mentioned that the file has uh, three components, IVIR, uh, dissolution, and, and in vivo data, we will reset it. First, we will, we will compute the disposition parameters uh, for the uh, subjects in the, in the data set. So we will do the mapping of the file headers with the program needed headers. In this case, subject is subject, time is time, CP is concentration, and we will retain the dose. We will save this and the data will appear and here we have the data next thing we perform the uh, calculation of disposition parameters using one compartment body model parameters uh, of uh, k and, and vd in this case dose unit is milligrams concentration unit is micrograms per ml and the program has picked up the doses for the subject if those are not correct, then you can change those. Let's submit this. And the disposition parameters for, for all subjects have been calculated, KEL and VD, which are needed for the subsequent uh, analysis. Next, we perform the uh, in vitro data analysis for the dissolution data. And uh, here we select the batch as a batch these are the these are the file headers and these are the program needed uh, variables and then let's click on the next button and select the units for the time in this case hour and the dissolution data is displayed here and then we can perform the descriptive analysis and graphic graphical an analysis of this data but let's perform the in vitro analysis first and we have three batches uh, and uh, let's look at the batch one analysis here is the percent dissolution versus time is plotted then the f1 and f2 comparison for the batch one versus batch two batch one versus batch three shown here and the other dissolution parameters are are computed here let's uh, Let's perform the deconvolution analysis using Wagner-Nelson method. And then here the uh, file headers uh, need to be kind of match with the uh, program needed here, which is subject to subject. Time is time, CP is concentration. And, and then grouping we have to do with the batch because we have the uh, batch variable in our dissolution file. So let's select the units for time as hour. Concentration is micrograms per mil. And then click on the next button. And, and then all the data is being displayed here for the three batches. Let's perform the in vivo analysis. And we will use the KEL that is needed for the Wagner-Nelson uh, computation of the fraction absorbed. Uh, and here is the data uh, is being displayed that we have computed earlier. We submit this data so that the fraction absorbed computation can be done. 
and here the fraction absorbed computation uh, for uh, six subjects uh, having data for the three batches is being performed. Let's look at the one of the data sets. Here the computation for the Wagner-Nelson method is shown and graphical analysis of the fraction absorbed versus fine for these subjects uh, is, is shown. PK parameters are also computed uh, for this subject and this batch. Uh, and then uh, next, uh, let us let us perform the correlation. Uh, let us look into level A correlation. We have three methods uh, of the level A correlation, interpolation, uh, Hill method, and the Weibull uh, function uh, that is being utilized for fitting the data. Let us select the interpolation method. And here is the uh, computation for the all three batches with slope and intercept has been done. Uh, and here is a plot for the percent absorbed versus dissolution for the three batches is being shown here. And now next, let's, let's perform the convolution analysis. Let's select the dose of 10. Submit it. And then the, the computation uh, for the for the intermediate computation for the percent dissolve uh, and and the uh, cumulative percent absorb uh, is 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 done here and then you convert that into the amount of the drug release into into the blood uh, and then utilize that for the uh, convolution integral uh, where the prediction of the plasma concentration is being done and the prediction of the plasma concentration based on the one compartment CBM model using either the internal scaling factor or volume of distribution uh, can, be, can be done. Uh, in case you don't have the disposition uh, data, then you can, you can have the, uh, your defined volume of distribution parameter that can be utilized for the computation. And then we select the time frame here as, as a, as uh, 24 hours <coughs> and then we submit this and the analysis uh, for the convolution is being performed here and here are the parameters of the convolution for the AUC and the CMAX observers is predicted are being compared uh, and the prediction error is being shown here scaling factor that was utilized is shown here and we can look at the graph for this batch. Here is observer versus predicted plot is, is shown here, which we can, you can download. Uh, the same thing we can do for the batch two. And, and we can, uh, as you can see, the observer versus predicted plot is shown. And the, similarly for the batch three, uh, the observer versus predicted plot, plot is being shown. So this is all about the uh, IVIVC correlation. Similarly, you can perform the analysis using, using the Lurie-Gullman method. And, and the, uh, if, if the drug behaves uh, as a uh, two compartment body model drug, you can utilize the Lurie-Gullman method. And the numerics is independent, independent of the compartments uh, where you need the IV uh, data corresponding with your with your in vivo formulation data in order to perform the numeric uh, convolution and deconvolution. It, now, once this system is uh, validated and you have the parameters for these three batches for the slope and intercept uh, for the correlation between the uh, percent absorbed and percent dissolved, then you can use that correlation for the, for the prediction of the uh, external batch. And in this case, you can click on the external and, and then, then you can upload the external batch in where you have the dissolution data for the external batch, as well as you have uh, in vivo data uh, for, the, for the external batch. If you have those, then you, you, can, you can perform the analysis. Let's open this batch. Let's save this external batch. And then in this external batch, we have the dissolution data and the, we map that with the in vitro for the program needed uh, variable and the CP data is in vivo data and then let's, let's click on the, on the next button and then we have select the batch for batch 
a time per time and then time unit is hours and then this is the data for the for the external batch dissolution data and then the dissolution analysis is being com uh, computed uh, for the batch 1 batch 2 batch 3 comparison is also being done and then let's perform the next in vivo analysis and and then here we also do the mapping for the uh, data set as subject time concentration and the batch as being a group and, and then perform the in vivo analysis we will use this mean value uh, of the KEL uh, that is computed before and then we submit the analysis is being performed uh, for the Wagner Nelson method as before then uh, we utilize this KEL scaling parameters that is being before use slope and intercept value of your uh, previous IVIVC correlation and then time frame again we use 24 hours uh, and then dose in this case is again 10 and dose units are in milligram and then we submit this and the analysis for the external batch has been performed with AUC Cmax observed predicted value with the corresponding prediction error and the graph for the uh, observed and predicted data is being sh shown. So once once you, you, you perform all of this analysis, uh, then you have the validated system uh, that will allow you uh, to uh, provide the data uh, for the variety of the reasons uh, to the regulatory agencies. Thank you.